guys, it's Josh and Kim, and this is the first episode, I guess you'd consider, of season four of Haunt Talk. Now, this episode won't be covering any one particular haunted house. It's going to be an overview of some of the places you're going, uh, some of the things that are going to be changing with the channel, and also a top ten list of places we think you should visit this year. First thing we want to talk about is that we started a Patreon page. Um, we would like to expand our videos to more than just haunted house reviews. We would like to take on um, news and conventions, things of that nature, all related to horror. Um, in order to do that, though, we need your help. So if you could check out our Patreon page, we'll have links for it in the description and all that fun jazz for you. Please consider donating. It would be awesome. Yeah, it would be great to be able to bring you guys more quality reviews of places that are further and just more content in general. If we actually get patrons, we might we'd be able to do videos like this, not obviously, of course, of just haunted houses, but just keep you updated and like shit at conventions, but year round, so that way it's not you could look forward to just watching our videos, not just in October. But um like I said all that information is in there. Um, moving on, uh, I guess we'll kind of talk about some of the places we plan on going this year. Um, first off, I'm going to say we're going to try and go to quite a few different places this year. Um, we've got some newer places. For example, um, there's a place in Chippewa, uh, the Slaughterhouse. Yeah. Um, that's one of the places we're going to be going this year. Um, we're going to check out some places we did review last year, but didn't give them quite a good review. Um, we're going to give them another chance and see if they've improved at all, because we've gotten quite a few comments from mm -hmm. you guys saying, hey, you need to check them out again. So we're, we're taking your advice. Right, and which, like we always do, you know, we always read the comments, see all of it, you know. Um, but yeah, because uh, the one we were talking about, it was first year haunt, and we kind of want to, we want to see, we went pretty early on in their life cycle too of a new year haunt. So, you know, we want to give them the benefit of the doubt. But again, um, that's something all of our reviews, and we've always said, it doesn't matter if it's opening night, you know, for the first people, if we go in and it's a bad experience, if I'm still paying the same price that you did on the night that you had a great experience in the middle of the season, then I'm going to review the experience that was given to me. Like, that's that's how we do our reviews. I know people get upset about that sometimes and kind of hate on us, like, well, you shouldn't have won an opening night. Well, if they weren't ready, they shouldn't have been open, you know, but so that's just something we're always going to be pretty adamant on. Um... <clears throat> we also plan on doing some um, bigger haunts this year. Um, so we are taking an adventure, so to speak, this year. And we are going to Halloween Horror Nights. And that will be at least a three-part video because we're going there in the day a bit too. So we'll have something kind of covering the day a little bit. Not a, not a lot because the main folks are telling Horror Nights. But they have ten haunted houses this year. And I don't want to make a video that's like over an hour long, so it's probably going to be like part one, part two, and that way, you know, you can kind of see it, because we plan on talking about each haunted house and scare zone in detail, so there's ten haunted houses and five scare zones, um, and we'll probably give you some, like, tips and tricks type things that we find out when we go there, so that'll that'll definitely be uh, interesting. Um, I, think, I think the most important change that we're probably making to the channel is, you see, we are now in a sitting down position, <laughs> so the table is... Still in front of us, but we are now sitting behind the table and not, uh, we're not standing in front of it. So you all have that to look forward to for the rest of the year as well. So you're welcome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, anything else we should cover before uh, we get into the, uh, our top ten list of places that uh, we kind of like recommend and kind of like... Well, again, we're taking your guys' advice and... You suggested that maybe we have some photos and videos of some of the haunts oh, yeah. that we go to. So we're going to try to do that this year. Yeah, um, for sure get more footage. Obviously, a lot of the places don't allow it inside the haunts. But as much as we possibly can, yeah. we're going to try to film. Um, and I wouldn't want to show too much in the haunt anyways. Because like, you don't want to get things spoiled. But yeah. there'll be plenty of footage outside. Maybe some inside. Um we're looking into possibly talking to the people. We kind of thought about doing it last year, but like time constraints are crazy when you're trying to get to so many places and, you know, with work and stuff, it just, it makes it kind of hard to like get, do, to do everything you need want to do. But we're right. definitely going to try and we're for sure going to have more footage and like photos at least to show you this year. Um, I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's about it. So now we're going to get into our top 10 in no particular order. Yeah. Recommendations for 
for you guys this year. Right, and it's important, um, when we did this top 10, uh, the reason we're doing it is kind of like, there's a variety of different types of places, so we're going to have some big name haunts, some smaller places you haven't heard of, just that kind of stuff, and we'll talk more about that in detail, but that's, that's how we compiled this list. It wasn't like, they're all places we recommend, but it's not like, oh, these are our favorite haunts, it's just kind of like a, here's some different places for you to kind of try out. And most of these will be in the mid, and like, in Ohio, um, around our area. Some of them will be further than that, but... <clears throat> So, uh, number one on our list is uh, Ghost Lake, and that's in, uh, is it, it's in Conneaut Lake Park. I'm actually, I'm not sure. It's in Pennsylvania. Right, it's in Pennsylvania. Um, generally, I'm not a huge fan of, like, the, they call them screen parks, because I find that the haunted houses get stretched a little bit thin. And while this place, um, there is a review for it on our channel, I think from season one, um, the place... Uh, it does sometimes have that problem, but the, it has the amazing atmosphere of basically being in like an abandoned like uh, carnival type of thing. It has that kind of atmosphere. So it was an old amusement park, so abandoned amusement park, I'm sorry, not a carnival. And I think when it originally, when they originally started doing Ghost Lake, like um, Conneaut Lake was not in operation anymore. Yeah. I think I think it is slightly in operation now, but you it still is, get that feel. Yeah, it's it's in operation, but like. They still are kind of rusty antiques, so to speak. I mean, it definitely gives you, not even going during the holiday season, it gives you kind of the willies going in there because it feels like it's like a haunted amusement park. Right. It's kind of creepy. So the haunts, the haunts are pretty good. And they at least uh, they have before. We didn't go last year, but um, they do touch there, so that's cool. And it's pretty intense. Like they're, they're not the most detailed things, but they really use their environment um, to their advantage, which I really like it when haunts do that okay so our number two haunt in no particular order is our big name haunt which is Bates Motel and Haunted Hayride pretty much anybody that goes to haunted houses knows Bates Motel I mean just by the name it's in Philadelphia PA and it's fantastic we had I smiled through the entire hayride I, I just was dumbfounded by all the detail they put into it. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculously great. I got scared so many freaking times. It was unbelievable. I think we referred to it as the Disneyland of haunted houses. Yeah. It's, it's very elaborate. I've never seen anything quite like it. And I've been on some pretty good hay rides, but that thing just kind of like, it's one of those things that once you're on, once you go to it, everything else is just kind of like, well, that was good, but it wasn't that. Yeah, like... Like, you didn't see, like, anything that, like, any of the mechanics for, like, the animatronics and stuff. They had them so well hidden. Yeah. I mean, you thought it was a real dinosaur at one point. Like, it was just, just phenomenal. Yeah. It's... I highly recommend taking the trip out. Yeah, everything there. Even the haunted house and the little corn maze type thing they had, which is great. Um, and that leads us to our number three, which is a dark view. This is a lesser known haunt. We figured it counteract the big name that we just talked about. And this is in Toronto, Ohio. Um, this haunt was just a lot of fun. Not the scariest thing ever, but what it lacks in um, like the scare factor, it way more than makes up for and uh, just being straight up entertaining. Mm -hmm. And kind of like funny in a really dark way. Yeah. Like, and it was just, it was just great. It was like walking through an interactive play very unique they took you know something very traditional and you know you know gave a, a new fresh a uh, new fresh coat of paint like it was this was really cool yeah and the actors in it were just really interactive and just they were hysterical mm -hmm. i think we mentioned him before um <laughs> uh fatso yeah i remember your name uh he he was the highlight of the night he was just so funny and it just made my night it was really fun. I mean, the whole thing, just really good. Lots of good, like, set designs and stuff like that. And, I mean, it was in the middle of the woods. Like, we kind of got scared driving out there. It was kind of yeah, dark creepy. and shady looking. At one point, we were like, are we going the right way? And we yeah. saw, like, a tiny little sign on the reflector of the lights. And we're like, oh, I guess we are. But, <laughs> which, I, that was really, that's a really cool aspect as well. I kind of forgot about how secluded that place is, yeah. which is something you don't see a lot. But it was, it was really neat. Um... Well, I guess that brings us to number four. Number four, which isn't too far from this. So if you're looking to make trips, definitely you know, do the, and do two in the same night. Two in the same night. 
Um, this is one of our personal favorites, honestly. Um, it's very unique. That's what its category is today. Um, it's Wells Township Haunted House. Mm -hmm. Now, if you did watch our documentary, Haunt Behind the Scare, you are familiar with this haunt. This is the one that was pretty much the focus of the documentary. Mm -hmm. um, they tear it down every year. The only thing that's standard is like a couple things. They have like a vortex tunnel and a slide. Everything else changes mm -hmm. every year. And every time it's just something just totally off the wall. Having you go right. backwards, do just crazy stuff. Just mm -hmm. crazy stuff. Which makes it so unique. So many haunts, you know, it's like, and that's why we go to it every year. Cause there's other haunts where it's like, yeah, they've added like a new small theme or they've changed a couple rooms. But you pretty much still know what to expect. You'll see a couple new things here and there, you know. But like with Wells Township, it's like going to a completely different haunted house every time. Like the layout of the place generally is fairly similar, but every single room is different usually. Yeah. And you just never know what to expect. And it can get really intense in time as well. It's very interactive. If you do not like being touched, it isn't a great place for you. I mean, they will touch you, grab you. You know, obviously they're not going to hurt you, but like if that's something that really bothers you, I will say that you probably want to stay clear of this place because they they're gonna they're gonna get you. They're, you know, that's yeah. just what you're they probably do. gonna get blood on your face, and <laughs> you're probably gonna get put into a scene, yeah, in what some way, shape, or form. So yeah. But ran by great group of people, great place. Definitely recommend it. And said if you're going to Darkview, you're going there. Do you, the uh, you know. Do them yeah, both. Do them they're both. like within like a half hour or so between yeah, each Yeah, they're pretty other, close. So. Um, so that brings us to number five. Um, and this one we're going to basically, if you're like, I want to go to a haunted house and I want to just be there for an eternity. <laughs> um, uh, it's, no, five is Rich's Fright Farm and it's in uh, PA. It is, it is so massive. Uh, essentially, you get on a hayride and the hayride's fairly long. And in that hayride, it drops you off at a mansion that I'm pretty sure is built just for the haunted house. It's a mansion they built. And then there's the mansion, and then there's the outside grounds of the mansion. And then after the mansion, there's like a maze, and then there's like a blackout thing. And there might even be something oh, else in between there. God, I forgot about that thing. Like from the time we boarded the wagon to the time we left, it was two hours of straight haunted house. Now mind you, that's not, that's no, there's not really, well there was like a couple tiny lines in between. So maybe all together, we were actually spending time walking through the haunt and riding through the haunt. It was probably about an hour and 40 minutes at least. Yeah. And that's a lot of time. I mean, you'll get that type of time from places like, well, as we mentioned, Ghost Lake, but a lot of that's waiting in line between each different haunted house. This is just you wait in your main line, and then you just you just go. You just go through. It's it's like a haunted adventure. It's great. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's great. Not the most intense thing. And I've seen places with better in theming and stuff, but just the sheer size of it. It's mm -hmm. just, when you're done, you, you like kind of feel like you accomplished something. Yes. Especially um, when you lead through paranoia. Just Yeah. I just don't know say. if that's the same as it was. We went two years ago. It's still there. It is? Okay. It's still there. <laughs> but, um, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just going to say, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> Oh, and I'm going. I'm going to take number six. I'm going to talk about this because this is one of my personal favorite <laughs> places we've ever been, um, which is also very unique. And unique. It's on Lewisburg Haunted Cave, which is uh, it's in Kentucky, right? Was it Kentucky? Yeah, I, I don't know. It Google Ohio. it. Yeah. Eh, my, I don't know. It's, good. it's Lewisburg Haunted Cave. It is insane. This thing is so long. Um, it is so intense. I mean, it starts off, just the opening thing, and obviously we're not going to get into like lots of scene-by-scene scene things, but you just are over this, like, it's dark, you're on a bridge over water, and there's people in the water that will jump up and grab your ankles while you're in the water, and it just kind of sets a precedent for the kind of ridiculousness that is going to um, happen to you while you're in this cave. I mean, people firing guns at you in a cave, and my ears are ringing for like an hour. Yeah, there's cars and stuff inside this cave. <laughs> Like, I don't know how they got them there. There's cars. It's and ridiculous. It's long. It's almost an hour long. Like, it is intense. If you have slip resistant shoes, wear them. Because, yeah, um. Very uneven terrain. I almost fell on my butt quite a few times. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, just even like the scenes they have, I mean, they don't have to do much. We're in a scary ass cave. No, but, like, we're in a cave. That was scary enough. And then they added other things, and it was yeah. like. Kinds of crazy oh animatronics. There's, I think, dragons. Lots of pyrotechnics in there. Just 
just if you want something unique and intense, just mm -hmm. go there. It's so it's so great, so great. All right, so that brings us to our next haunt, number seven, which is Bloodview Haunted House. This is our charity haunt. This is in Broadview Heights in Ohio. This haunt is very unique. Everybody is a volunteer. Mm -hmm. They have a very small budget, but they they just go a lot out. I mean, they have fire dancers and all this fun stuff. I mean, they get really immersive and they pretty much take anybody to work in this haunt. I think the youngest you have to be is like 14 mm -hmm. and they will use you. Yeah, um, and they're and they're similar. She's saying kind of like to what we were saying about Dark View is this place is very very based on the actors, like it's an interactive mm -hmm. experience. You know, it's kind of like walking through a play. Um, if you're looking for like super super detailed like high end props and stuff like that, you're not really gonna find it. They do a good job yeah. detailing the scenes that they have. Um, they do a good job with it. But the the best job they'd accept you go there for the actor. So and the yes. cool thing is, I know at least they used to do it. Like you buy. You're, you like buy a ticket and you can just like keep marathoning it as much as you want through the night. You go, mm -hmm. you know, you go and you get back in line and you just keep going through. And that's actually something unique. Yeah, because you, you, you won't get the same experience each time no. you go through. Because, I mean, they just totally change it depending on, you know, what they feel like doing. They might, you know, have different actors in the scene and the scene might just totally change. You never know. Like, I mean, I'll never forget the one actor following my one friend just playing with their hair, just whispering in her ear, I'm going to lick your hair. Just like the hell, which is creepy, but yeah, this is cool, right? Like I don't know, it's really, it's really neat. Um, so number eight on our list is we wanted, uh, we wanted to give you guys a good haunted, tra um, a good haunted trail. That's um, in a haunted house that isn't really well known, because um, it was a real surprise for us last year actually. And it is Trail of Nightmares. Um, I forget the exact location, but it's close to Mansfield. Yeah, it's very close to Mansfield. So if you're doing the prison, make sure to uh, hit this place up as yeah. well. Um, it doesn't Go to look the prison first because this one doesn't open till dark. Yeah, because it's, it's a trip. Um, it doesn't look like much when you get there. It's just like it's literally behind a storage shed, and the line just kind of goes <laughs> here. And we were really like, uh, this is why you can't judge a book by its cover. Because like there's a point where I was like, I don't even know if I want to go here. Like I mean, like you couldn't see anything. I mean, it's just like a line, and then you're just you kind of go into the woods. But man, um, at first it kind of started off a little bit slow, and I'm like, okay, so I expected. And then after that, it was just like scene after scene, and like really, I mean, like they built a town, a church. There's a graveyard scene. There's a cave with a dragon in it, and it was just like they spaced you out really well. Like mm -hmm. they literally waited like probably at least five ten minutes between each group of people that they sent through. They had lighting techniques that just totally disorientated you and was just really strange and yeah. um, just really added to the atmosphere. Got a, quite a few scares from people hiding in the woods there. I mean, they, they did well. They did distraction well. Yeah. they. It, it was really, really good. Like, yeah, I didn't have high hopes. I mean, what do you have to say about a haunted house that's behind a storage unit? I mean, it was just kind of strange, but it was so... Good. Yeah, because there's one point where actually I thought we were done with it. I thought we were going <laughs> to the exit, and then I realized, oh no, we're not even like halfway through this yeah. thing. And I'm like, wow, this is actually impressive because like it's also really reasonably priced as well. I mm -hmm. forget the ticket price, but it, I know it was very reasonable. Um, highly recommend the place. It's it's really great, and uh, I'm hoping that they start getting more recognition because it's not a haunted house. Like I don't even know how we found it. It's just through Facebook somehow. I think. Yeah, I think we were looking for places yeah. that were nearby and that popped up for some reason or we saw a sign on the side of the road. Something yeah. happened and we were like, well, let's check it out. We have time. So that's what we did. we did. So the next one we're going to talk about is our historical haunt. And that is the Akron Haunted Schoolhouse and Laboratory. And that, of course, is in Akron, Ohio. This place has been around for 30 plus years. And it just recently, last year, got bought by the same people who do Factory of Terror, which is a Guinness Book World Record haunt. And let's just say they made some improvements, and they were very good improvements. Yeah. We went uh, last year, and we were blown away. It was, it was really good. It's, it's, always, it's always really good, um, but I feel like it was starting to kind of slip a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And then I really think, like, they bought it. They, when, once Factory Tear bought it, they really, like, I think they're trying to update it. 
Uh, I'm, I don't know what they're going to be doing this year. I'm pretty sure they are making more improvements for this year. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, if you haven't been to this one and you're anywhere in the area or, you know, if you're going to be around here, like you for sure have to check it out. I mean, I feel like it's almost like a haunted house rite of passage type of thing. <laughs> like it was one of the first to really do the detailed scenes and stuff. And some mm -hmm. of like the older scenes are still there. I mean, like Dracula's castle is still such a amazing scene. And yeah, there's not... Uh, there's just so many cool things about this haunted house. If you haven't been there, you really need to check it out. I mean, sure. what other haunted house can you go to that has a giant Tesla coil mm. inside their haunted house? And I don't mean just a little one, because I knew, know there's some yeah. haunted houses that have those itty-bitty ones. No, this thing's, like, ginormous. It's yeah. huge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember the first time I ever went there, I had no idea where it was. And um, there's a certain... Uh, a certain surprise factor to lightning being shot at your face. And you're just not <laughs> expecting that, right? So that's a thing that just kind of happened. Man, that it'll get you. Um, but yeah, place is, place is great. Um, so that brings us to our number 10, our um, last one on the list. And this is uh, our up-and-coming haunt. Last year was its first year, um, and it blew us out of the water. We didn't expect much from it. I believe it was located in a strip mall as well. Yeah, it's behind an acme. Yeah, um, it's called Ghoul Brothers. Um, the level of detail in this place was so great um and it's not the longest haunt and it might not be the scariest haunt there was quite a bit of jump scares but just the detail they put in this thing it's just you can tell the people they're doing it are so passionate mm -hmm. and you know like i'm hoping uh you know hopefully they continue to be successful and make it longer and you know just keep working on it because like it was really good yeah it was really good and like, we went through with somebody who was friends with the um, the owner, and the owner actually came to, like, visit with us once we were done with the mm -hmm. haunt, but he was in character, and he never broke character, right. <laughs> even while he was being introduced to us. So it was kind of unique, and he just, he, he came out, and he said hello real quick, and then he went right back in there to scare more people. So um, there was a lot of passion into this haunt, yeah, the details were just phenomenal. There were just so many little things that they did that were just really good. And, yeah, I hope that they are uh, very successful cause, and expand more because they're very good. Highly recommend it. And it's in Akron, so yeah. you could hit up the Haunted Schoolhouse and yeah. Lab and go to Ghoul Brothers. So definitely do that. I'm sure do that. Yeah, they yeah, two great haunted houses in the same city. This is yeah, for sure. Um, but, I mean, that brings us to the end of our list. But, as we said at the beginning of the video, you know, please uh, consider doing the Patreon because we really enjoy doing these videos. Um, but traveling and going to all these places can become very pricey. And like I said, we would love to be able to do more videos for you guys. So head over there, at least watch the video, take consideration. And uh, we'll see you when we uh, start reviewing for after, well, when we start reviewing haunts and we have our first review out. Thank you guys very much for watching. Bye. Do 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 do